welcome to that time of year that the shops start filling up with Christmas stuff. Well, they've been filling up with Christmas stuff for a while. And this is a hand-chosen item from eBay. It is fabulous uh, ethnic Santa, who looks like Mr. T in a way. Um, why does he wear a black beard? Is this a cultural thing? To, uh, also, the gold lame, is that even the correct word for it? And the very ornate trim here. It seems like it's aimed at a more exotic culture than ours. Definitely, he's a very young Santa. It looks quite good. But anyway, this thing is musical. I shall warn you in advance because I'm about to turn it on and it's about to make loud musical noises. I'll not run it too long for that reason. So this is the music option. Right, so the way this works is you dangle it from this uh, chain of beads and it skips in the empty section at the top, goes down to the bottom, stops just short of the bell and then slams into reverse. Right, that's enough, that's enough. Uh, try and turn it off quick, turn it off. No, turn it off. That's better. It's uncontrollable. Uh, there is a little bell at the bottom here, a little tinkly bell. I think the reason for this is that because if the last beads went up the bottom, then Santa might come um, off the end of the beads. So it just basically, that's a sort of end stop to prevent that. Let's open this up. Right, to open it up, I'll pull this package off first because uh, that just gets in the way. Uh. Uh, maybe I won't. Maybe maybe I'll just leave that on there. Uh, but you pull these little panties down like this to reveal the switch, and there is uh, a switch marked on and off. But if you switch it off, it's actually on. But it do, it just uh, it does the motions without the music. Um, let's try opening this. So there are four screws that I can see here. Two at the bottom. And two at the top. I'm not sure how much access this will give. I might have to rip off all the hot melt glued trims to actually gain access to this. So this is the fourth screw. I can feel it slipping, so that should be it. That is not it. Is there something I don't know about here? Hold on, let me look up the end. It looks like, oh, it might be clamped by his head. Do I have to pull his head off? That seems a bit mean. Anything else up here that's hidden? Oh, the head looks like it is sort of soft plastic that could pull off. Right, I'm going to have to pull his head off. One moment. Don't let your children... Oh, no, I've killed Santa. Oh, it's got metal staples going through. That's lovely. And the little light, perhaps? Where was, what was making it light up? Well, there was a little light. Oh, it's an LED. That's all right. So now it should open to reveal lots of wires. Far too many wires. There's the electronic module. It's tiny. That is really small for the amount of noise this thing was making. I suppose it's just a sort of, well, generic little audio chip thing. Let me see if I can pop that out. It may not come out. I think it's hot mail glue. Hold on. Let's squirt some isopropyl alcohol into it and see if it does its magic. Actually, you know what? I should take the batteries out first, shouldn't I? For I short this out and the Santa bursts into flames. I put JCB batteries in because earth-moving batteries seem like a good idea for that. JCB batteries that say seven times the capacity and energy of a normal battery and then in very small print say compared to zinc carbon, which is a pretty much an obsolete technology now. So, not surprising. Oh, that is, like, that's doing all the music. That's horrendous, right? Tell you what, before I go any further, I'm going to take a picture of, actually I don't need to take a picture because I can look at the video later. So it's black and green, uh, red, so that'll be negative, positive, hopefully. And then uh, the two white LEDs. Oh, I see there's a wee resistor on the LED here. Um, and I guess the two white ones are going to the speaker. No, uh, it's the speaker is being switched uh, down here. Uh, Oh, right, okay. I shall trace this out afterwards. Anyway, here is the mechanism. Which we're kind of interested in. There's a little classic motor down there. How does it do the reversing? Does it have a end of travel? There's the ball bearing mechanism. Is there something that physically... It switches direction. Oh, I can see a little cam down there. Oh, 
I can see a little cam and the gears actually slide backwards and forwards in that. So if I turn it around that way, it'll slip down into that little housing and then it actually moves the gears backwards and forwards into two positions by the look of it. Right, tell you what, I think we need a dem demonstration of that. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. Watch this little wheel right down here. I'll, I'll use something thinner to point it. I shall use this to point it. You'll see this wheel uh, and assembly click backwards and forwards. Either this wheel is driving directly onto the I main drive wheel, or it comes back and it seems to engage with this wheel, which then reverses the direction. But it's notable the gearing is different. So they go at different speeds. That's maybe to compensate. So that as sand is going up, maybe it goes up slower than when it's coming down. Um, or would it would come down slower and going up because uh, that would compensate for the speed of it actually travelling, the weight of it having to carry its weight. Yes, that. Uh, let's see if this is the music setting or not. So every so often, you'll see that switch the gears. That's quite neat. How does it trigger that uh, switching between... Okay, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to explore this further to see what why that is actually doing because there's that little ramp. Does it actually stall at some point? There's something that's uh, there's something that is switching this across. One moment, please. Oh, I see what it is. This gear here is driving these two wheels, but they've got a very slightly different tooth ratio, which means that one turns slower, although they're spinning at uh, high speed. One of them is turning slower than the other, and there's a ramp that when it uh, reaches the point that it drops into the other wheel, that's when it changes gear, but then makes a slow transition back again when they come back out of sync. That is very clever. A lot of uh, work goes into making these toys. After that, we've got the cam mechanism that does both the hands and also makes the feet go up and down as well. That is quite neat. Let me uh, just demonstrate that. Now you know what's happening. So that's uh, these two wheels moving out of sync. drops in, changes the gear, and then ramps out again when it comes back round to the out of sync. There it goes, with a slight rasping, crashing of gears type noise. Very interesting, that's quite a golden white LED. That's quite a nice LED, actually. That's a really good colour. I actually thought that was tungsten in there. Uh, Rightio, that's more or less it. Let's take a look at the audio module. So I'll just uh, take things apart and reverse engineer. One moment, please. <laughs> well, here's the schematic. Uh, what we have is a positive and negative command. I should draw the batteries in here but next to Santa's very stylish but nonetheless decapitated head. This isn't an ethnic statement. I just want to say that. I'd quite like uh, ethnic Santa. It's quite a stylish and expressive face. It's very good. Uh, even the beard, the texture of it, is actually done really well. Yes, that's obviously evolved over time. So we have the stack of three AA batteries. And it goes to two switches. The first switch is the main power switch. And either way will switch the power to the motor. And the motor draws about 270 milliamps. But if you stall it, it goes above, somewhere above one amp. I decided not to leave it sitting at one amp for too long. But uh, it will depend on the impedance of the wiring and the batteries. Uh, then we've got the LED, which is running at a sizzling 50 milliamps with a 30 ohm resistor. And then the sound module, which is, is, has its own little uh, built-on uh, decoupling capacitor, and the output goes directly to the speaker, plus it's got another section of that switch that switches in only in one direction. It'll switch the sound to the speaker. And that is it. So it's quite a complex little device, I have to say. It's quite neat. Uh, this mechanism is quite intriguing indeed. Let me just uh, focus back into that. Particularly things I notice afterwards, this little wheel here can jump to the side as well, which uh, maybe helps kick it out of the way when uh, it's when the gears move into position. It's a clever little mechanism. Someone somewhere in China does nothing but design toy, me toy mechanisms and try and make them super complicated and with random sequencing and automatic sliding gearboxes. It's all very neat. But that is it. The hidden secrets of... Uh, I'll just put the I'll just put the head up, the disembodied head up there. The hidden secrets of random Christmas toys. This is the little sketch I did before I drew it down on here. Um 
the random Christmas toy stuff that you find at this time of year and how quite complex it is, but it also is very much a battery eater at that sort of current. And also, if you turn the music on, it's going to be super annoying. So it's the only sort of thing that you just put on, on and off briefly to please the kiddies who wanted to see it and then just probably turn it right back off again afterwards. But other than that, you know, it's pretty neat. I like it. <laughs>